Today, Adventure Archives travels to a far off land, the remote desert mountains of the West Texas wilderness. Join us as we hike all across this landscape and explore the stunning scenery it has to offer, from canyons and caves to sunny mountain peaks. To start the journey, I made my way to the airport to fly out to Texas. My connecting flight was in Chicago, where I would meet up with Andrew to fly to San Antonio, though his flight was running late. After sprinting across the airport, I caught up with Robbie, and we got on our flight to Texas. <laughs> Good work. Wow. After a very long year, we felt extremely fortunate and happy to be traveling once again. It was nighttime when we landed, but the summer heat surprised us when we stepped outside. Fortunately, Thomas was there to meet us. Yo, 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 yo. Yeah, oh, oh. Got you guys. A little Texas welcome present. I don't know, that was a rough plane ride. <laughs> <laughs> we both had middle seats. Oh, yeah. It was very sucks. crowded. We got back to my apartment, and I took the others out for a late night jaunt along the San Antonio River. Here, we grabbed some beer and enjoyed the rest of our night out. Hey. Hey. While we were out, we explored some of the downtown area's landmarks. This area, called the Pearl, had an old building once used as a stable for the historic Pearl Brewery. We also saw a few furry and feathered friends. We were getting very excited to leave for our trip the next day. And it seems Sierra felt the same way. Then we returned home for a much needed night of rest. In the morning, we brewed some coffee, and because of the long drive ahead of us, went out to grab some lunch. On the menu today was pineapple aguas frescas, horchata, and a variety of Tex-Mex tacos. Once we were back home, we filled up a huge tank of water, packed our things, and headed out. Now, we were on our way out of the city and out to the west. Along the way, Thomas stopped to pick up some supplies, including some butane gas for his gas stove. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Just do, doing my stretches, <laughs> getting ready for this long car ride. <laughs> you get it? Yep. Once again, we were off. And during the long drive, we found a variety of ways to entertain ourselves. We also stopped at a rest area with some questionable accommodations. <laughs> the most pathetic pet area ever. <laughs> this is really sad, wow. Well, did you get a good amount of exercise? Can we yeah. go now? <laughs> All right, Andrew has been properly exercised. Good. As we headed west, the landscape became more and more rocky and mountainous. Our final destination was Guadalupe Mountains National Park. But because of the length of the drive, tonight we'd be staying at a hotel on the way. Even then, we had a long way ahead of us. How are you doing, Thomas? Okay. How are you doing? I'm very bored. <laughs> Clearly. 
<laughs> After that brief diversion, we decided to stop for some food. Well, it doesn't get better than this, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it most certainly does. <laughs> that is a key ingredient to a road trip, though. Eating bad food <laughs> on the curb <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Well, what'd you get? Same burger, I think. What'd you get? What'd you get? I think burger. we all got the same burger. <laughs> Even for a fast food burger, this is really subpar. <laughs> well, look who we got here. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's a cat under that guy's car. Huh. What? Fry? <laughs> this would be the saddest dinner I've ever had in my life. <laughs> for the situation. <laughs> like, it's very fun because of the situation, but the actual food, wow. Ugh. Let's get out of here. Yep. <laughs> Bye. Now, it was back on the road. In the distance, we saw the ominous looking flares of excess natural gas being burnt off from oil wells. The golden glow of the sunset illuminated everything eventually fading away to dusk, adding to the eeriness of the vast, empty desert. Whenever I'm on a desert road and I'm like one of the only people out there, I get so anxious. You know, it's different from like driving in the forest or, you know, anywhere on the East Coast. You're bound to run into someone on the East Coast, but out here, you could be... Yeah, there's nothing out there. You could be, yeah, you could be stranded there and no one will come by for a couple days. But eventually, as dusk fell to night, we came across a pocket of civilization yet again. Here, we'd be staying at a hotel along the highway. Busy place. <laughs> Knowing we would have some pretty tough hiking in store for us in the next few days, we decided to enjoy all of the creature comforts. Tell me the entertainment strategy here. You've got a laptop. Got you know, while those videos media are loading on one screen, I switch to the other. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll turn the TV on so I have a third one. Just <laughs> hotel archives. <laughs> Adventure archives is canceled. It's time for hotel archives. You want some I'm not going to eat Don't off of it. <laughs> As fun as our time filming Hotel Archives had been, it was a new day, and that meant it was time to start our real adventure. We packed up, checked out of our room, and made our way northwest to the Guadalupe Mountains. Our initial plan was to backpack in the mountains, but due to wildfires, many of the trails and all of the backpacking campsites were closed. Some of the best trails were still open and car camping was still an option, so we were still looking forward to exploring the area. It had been a long time since we had traveled this far from home, and even longer since we had been out west, so we reveled in the breathtaking views. Finally, we had made it to the park. Campsites were first come, first served, so we headed in. So there might be some openings for the campsites. All the backcountry campsites are closed, but the trails are still open, so we should be able to go to those. We searched around for a site and found a nice location towards the front. How's it look? Great tent area right here. Oh man. Amazing view. Now, it was time to get our campsite set up. After pitching our tents, we got our gear together and planned out our first hike. Today, we would be hiking the El Capitan Trail, a total of roughly 11 miles. Tomorrow, we would hike a total round trip distance of 8.4 miles up to the highest point in Texas, Guadalupe Peak. Finally, we would close out our trip with a short hike on the Devil's Hall Trail. It was a beautiful day with a clear sky. We made our way to the trailhead and got our bearings. El Capitan Salt Basin Overlook Trail, that's what we're doing today. Salt Basin Dunes Trail. And 
then, we were off. Immediately, I saw lots of plants commonly found in this desert environment. So there's a couple interesting desert plants here. Right here, I think this is something in the Sotal genus. And you can see it's got these tall, dry stalks that grow out of it. And those will seed and disperse more plants. But these are actually really good for starting fires, especially out here where it's like kind of more arid. Um, you can use it as like a spindle for your, you know, fire drill. And then down here, there are prickly pear cacti. I don't know the exact species, but prickly pear cacti generally are edible if you prepare it a certain way. And they also produce fruits that you can eat. All along the ground, I'm seeing these purple and yellow flowers growing. And right next to them, I see all these like yellow looking cherry things. I think these are the same plant, um, but either way, it looks like both of them are the, in the nightshade family. Nightshade is a family of plants that, you know, in, includes tomatoes and eggplants and peppers, but it's also notorious for having like really toxic plants. So I would give a wager that these berries are not good to eat. So I'm not sure if this is completely accurate, but my understanding is that some of these columns that we're seeing in the mountains here, is actually just debris from carbon life that used to exist in the ocean that was here. So it's just like shells on top of dead fish, on top of plankton and you know everything else that used to live in the sea. So all the columns we're seeing there are just the remnants of that. And I think if you go around here, you can see some pretty cool fossils left over. Finally, our journey had really begun and we happily took to the trail. cactus is called a tree chola and it's called that obviously because it has this tree branching kind of pattern but cholas there's a lot of cacti in that genus and some of them are kind of shaped like balls but I've heard some of them can be pretty nasty like if you get the spines in your skin it's like really hard to pull them out they're almost like fur this one looks equally intimidating <laughs> something I don't really think about that often is that cactuses flower do all cactuses do that I I think so. Maybe the flowers don't always look like what we think of as flowers, but some of them have like really brilliantly colored flowers, like the ones we just saw. You know, I know we're not like super out west, but it, it hadn't really occurred to me that we were like in the western US in a different region than the Midwest until just now. Now we're on these like hills full of weird vegetation and you have this like a huge expansive view of the horizon and it's like that's that's something you never really get in the eastern U.S. unless you go find a specific mountain, but yeah, it just hit me that like <laughs> we're actually out here. Yeah, Texas is a such a big state that you can go from feeling very east coasty to Florida E to desert to west, like like, like we're, we're right now. Having that mountain breeze helps with the feeling too. <laughs> yeah. We continued hiking across the open desert hills. Along the way, I saw some wire lettuce flowers, lyre leaf green eyes, and a nylon hedgehog cactus. As we hiked across the open desert expanse, we were struck by both its beauty and its intimidating ruggedness. So we were talking about if you were like stranded out here, there's a myth that like you can cut open a barrel cactus and drink water from it, but that's actually not really possible. Some of the solutions you can do is like take a plastic bag and put it over some of these like leafy shrubs and wait overnight for them to give off some of the water through transpiration. So then the condensation gathers on the bag and you can drink that. Another thing is like if there is dew in the morning, you can uh, put like cotton around your feet and just walk through the grass to soak up the moisture and then squeeze it out into your mouth. It's not gonna be a lot of water, but <laughs> it'll be something. The winding trail took us through rocky gullies and to incredible vistas of the distant hills below us. We came across another rocky ditch, which almost looked like some of the landscapes we had back home. It's like a dry creek bed or something, right? It looks like it. Any fossils or anything? Not here. 
I see a lot of shale wow. light. Yeah. Yeah, that is shale, isn't it? Because you said this used to be an ocean, right? Yeah. Because in Ohio, there's also a lot of shale, and Ohio used to be an ocean way back. Well, I'll tell you one thing, definitely everybody went up to Guadalupe Peak. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're the only ones out here. I haven't seen a soul. Here we've got some sweet and spicy pecans. <laughs> These are actually good. They're kind of like savory almost. Although I will say, dry, spicy pecans are, uh, these taste like how this environment feels, kind of. <laughs> Although it's actually pretty cool right now. It's like, weather-wise, it's nice. Really? After a quick snack break, we were back on the trail. As we hiked, we could feel the hot sun bearing down on us. It really felt like a journey through an empty desert. So far, we had only run into one other person on the trail but there were plenty of plants around to keep us company. So interesting fact, the asparagus that we eat is actually related to that plant. And when you look at some of the younger stalks, you can really tell that they're in the same family. We also saw some sort of a ladybug and several colorful rocks along the ground. We think of the desert as very like beige, colorless environment akin to Thomas's tan pants. <laughs> but it's funny, like when you look close at some of the rocks on the ground, there's like, Rocks that have these like greenish, bluish hues and red and purples. It's like if you look closely, there's actually a lot of color to be found. How are those tan pants treating you, Thomas? Still broken. I think I may need to convert them soon. And my raggedy tan pants weren't my only problem. I kind of messed up. We got about two hours outside San Antonio. When I remembered, I forgot to bring my hiking boots, so I picked up a $15 pair of hiking shoes, which I see as a benefit for the rest of the team because this is slowing me down a little bit, let me smell the flowers. How's your day hike shoes? They're fine. I, I actually have hiked in these a good amount, so this trail's not too bad yet. <laughs> At least I'll get a tan out of this. You better SPF, boy. <laughs> Off in the distance, we saw Nipple Hill. And yes, that is what it's called. This is amazing, dude. Now that we're even higher up and in the hills, primo. Our little map that we got said that there's elk in this area. And right here, that is definitely some sort of deer-like creature's poop. The scat likely belonged to the mule deer, one of the most common animals in the park. We had hiked in the sun for a while, and it seemed like the trail was taking us on a long, winding path. Just curious to see where this trail is going to take us. Looks like it kind of goes along the hill there. Yeah, are we going to go up there, or are we going to go around it? I don't know. So that's definitely El Capitan, right? I don't know. Kind of looks like it, though. Seeing some of the rocky cliffs in the distance motivated us to keep hiking on. We climbed higher up, through more rocky gullies and towards the tops of arid hills. And at the top of one hill, we were suddenly treated to an incredible view. Wow, I did not expect to see that. Wow, that is like miles and miles of distance. In the distance, we saw some hikers who had gotten to the highest point of the hike. So there's like a spindly little shrub down here. This is in the ephedra genus, also called Mormon tea. What I've heard is that Mormons can't drink like coffee or tea, so they would make a tea out of this plant that would actually, it has ephedrine in it, so it gives them like this similar like stimulant kind of perky up symptoms. Yeah, I, I tried drinking this once. I've heard it smells like a foot, but it didn't taste too bad. <laughs> Did you get any effects? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> Though many of the species in this genus do contain ephedrine, it turns out the species called Mormon tea contains very little, if any at all. Okay, so one of the cool things about hiking in the desert is that you pretty much get to see everywhere you're gonna go. There's a little bit of a trail right there. We see it getting carved into the side of the mountain, and we do know we gotta circle back around, and we do see some trails down there, so. The cool thing is we can really see 
what the next four hours of our hikes are going to be just from where we are right now. We continued hiking and came across an agave americana plant, or sentry plant. So this is a type of agave, and it's related to some of the other spiny ones with the stalks we saw earlier. But you can see the spiny parts are much thicker and more succulent, if you will. So it's got this huge stalk with these beautiful red flowers. I'm not sure why it's called a century plant, but Thomas had an idea about that. I got maybe uh, it only blooms once in a century or two. Maybe it's kind of like resembles like a, like a Roman centurion standing guard because it's so tall and so looming, you know, so it's like standing guard here. I do know it's a slow growing plant and you know once in a century is probably an exaggeration but yeah you these stalks are probably pretty rare to see I only see a couple others and they're already like brown and dead so this is the only one like this that we've seen so far now is agave the same type as the sweetener is it derived from some sort of plant like this yeah yeah it's like agave syrup and that's also what they use to make uh, tequila. tequila yeah and uh, mezcal right I don't know yeah so you got tequila <laughs> from the agave you got uh, gin from the juniper. Yeah. We're going to have a good time tonight. <laughs> Interestingly, the common name for this plant is sometimes spelled century with a C or century with an S, suggesting the name has an obscure and long forgotten origin. However, the plants do typically only live 10 to 30 years. And speaking of plants, we came across another strange looking one off of the trail. So there's a funky looking plant here. It almost, it, to me, it looks like something out of a cartoon that would like grow and try and grab you. Thomas knew what it was. It's called Acotillo, and that's about the extent of our knowledge. <laughs> but it's got these like reddish flowers at the top and the whole stem is kind of thorny, much like many of the other plants out here. We got lucky with these Acotillas, as they usually just look like a clump of dead, spiny sticks. But the recent rainfall had turned them a bright green. Surprisingly, these plants are more closely related to tea and blueberries than to the cacti that grow nearby. We continued hiking, now entering even rockier terrain as the high noon sun shone down upon us. Besides the many plants, it seemed like the only life we saw were clusters of ants scurrying back and forth. All around us were rocky boulders, some of which had split apart. Though they appeared barren, some of them even had plants growing on them. Up ahead, we found a shady spot to rest. Come and sit with us. Mm. Let's enjoy the shade and a snack. <laughs> All right, Robbie, you said you got some snacks? Okay, so this was sent to us by the inimitable Marie. Marie Fisher. Ooh. Caffeinated chocolate. Ooh. Joe chocolate. Bits of buzz in every bite. That sounds like a much needed pick me up. Oh, that's a big chunk. Yeah, I'll take that. Thank you. Thank you. Marie, thank you. Thank you. Got a nice texture. Dink, dink. dink. Oh, hard. Dink. <laughs> well, oh, beautiful. good. Oh, really good. Mm, you can taste the coffee, too. Oh, yeah. There's like ground up beans on the chocolate. <laughs> and Marie, mm -hmm. thank you. That caffeine's gonna come in handy. Mm hmm. Mmm. That's tasty. Mm. That's so tasty. Yeah, that was actually really good. <laughs> now, it was back into the hot sun. We entered into another gully, which had cliffs that had several layers of rocks. Here, there were a couple of other desert wildflowers. So this humble shrub with these little white flowers are called Apache Plume. And when you look at the flower, it kind of just looks like your typical five-petaled flower, but when you see the seeds that it turns into, the, the name suddenly makes sense because it turns into these really feathery, downy, kind of fluffy things. I bet if you gathered enough of that, that would be good fire starting material, but then again, it wouldn't be too hard to start a fire in an environment like this. Um, when do you think that this little river here is actually running with water? Probably very infrequently, but when it does happen, it probably is pretty disastrous. Well, we're supposed to get rain tonight, huh? Yeah, it looked like it, but I'm not seeing a ton of clouds out here. Yeah, definitely not. Maybe out that way. But... With clear skies in the middle of the desert, we were pretty sure that, for once, rain wasn't something we had to worry about. But you never know with our kind of luck. As we hiked, we could see the rest of our trail in the distance, as well as some hitching posts. We also saw the flowers of a creosote bush and some bees and a wasp competing for the nectar of a bright yellow prickly pear flower. There were also some plants that were a bit more familiar to me growing in the shade nearby. So this is not a plant I would have expected to see out here. This is actually grapevine. 
I'm just so used to seeing it in the lush Midwest, it's, it's kind of surprising, but that's actually probably a good source of water. If you can like cut open the vines and a lot of times they'll just drip a lot of water out. It looks refreshing. We arrived at the hitching posts and took a moment to rest. We got our bearings and we reapplied some much needed sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a clay bath or something. Your skin, it's gonna be like the opposite effect. Your skin won't be able to sweat. Oh, yeah. They're gonna overheat. Look at that. I can't look at it anymore. <laughs> you give me this bottle. This direction is gonna take us to the overlook. We're gonna circle all the way around. And eventually we're gonna come back from over here, end up here, and then head back. Sounds good to me. Cool. We're getting close then, huh? Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. Sweet. So Thomas, it's like a little afternoon. Is that the hottest time of day for this part? The section of the trail we were hiking now was completely barren, with not a spot of shade in sight. Even with all of our sunscreen, we could feel the heat sapping our energy. So I did a wardrobe change to keep some of the sun off of me. We've been bamboozled. This only got super steep. <laughs> it was like a little flat the whole time. Now that we're exposed to the raw sun, it's decided to go uphill. The sun does not get any raw. tell where the trail is going because I know we're headed to that peak yeah but I don't see any discernible it's, trail it's tough we go up there what I do see is I see some leveling out up there but I don't know if that's actually it it's too hard to tell from this angle but we've got to go in front of this big rock slab yeah so we're not going behind that no no I guess we'll just have to hike and see it was amazing seeing how life eked out an existence and even thrived in an environment that seemed so harsh. Like a trio of desert lizards, we found a tiny patch of shade and decided to take full advantage Ooh. of it. So I brought a bunch of nut butters and stuff if you guys want any. Oh, damn. We got maple, chocolate. Yeah. I gotta be honest, maple syrup, syrup. sticking nut butter in my mouth sounds awful right now. <laughs> How about this mint chocolate pack -a -roon. Ooh. A macaroon for your backpack. I would, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Marie Fisher again. Marie is the reason we're alive here. <laughs> oh, that's good. Mint is a good thing for this. Mint gives you the illusion of being a little cool. <laughs> <laughs> the temperature itself is not that bad, but the sun makes it way worse. Mm -hmm. When the wind is blowing, it actually feels pretty nice. Because that water is not super satisfying. <laughs> As we sat and rested, we gazed into the distance building up the motivation to continue on. The weather called for some rain this afternoon now. You know, the, the weather's been changing here and there throughout the last couple of weeks, so I'm taking a look at those cumulonimbus clouds out there and the wind is blowing this way. So uh, might need to keep an eye on that and pick up our pace if we need to. Got some clouds behind us there too, but those don't look that menacing. We kept hiking and saw the pyramid-like hill in the distance that we were headed for. Man, if you look at our shadows, the sun is literally pretty much directly above us. Whoa. It's like Super Mario 64. Yeah. Just those very rudimentary shadows. Yeah. <laughs> Before long, we neared our destination and were treated to even more amazing views. Look at that! Oh, almost lost my hat. <laughs> this is awesome. Holy cow. Look at that, you can just see like salt flats and lakes all the way. The view stretched for miles, 
This environment was extremely unforgiving, but the payoff was more than worth it. on the Timberline Trail, this is a very similar spot that I was in. There was a bluff up here, big mountain back there, and then just extremely strong winds coming this way. Something about this type of landscape, maybe it just funnels the wind in. We trudged our way to the top of the hill, anticipating the incredible view from above. Oh, this is it. Wow. Very small little peak. It looks more pronounced on the other side, but up here it seems pretty flat. So, Thomas, I'm correct that tomorrow we're going to Guadalupe Peak. It's going to be higher than that one. That's going to be pretty beefy. We can see our trail down there. Yeah, you can actually see it over here too. It just continues all along. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I keep having this feeling where every time I come to a place like this, I think about how many people it involved just to get us here. Like, you look at this immaculate road here, how many people and how long did it take to get them to make that? And then just all this equipment that we got, like how many people that we have no idea who they are. The trails? The, trails, the trails itself? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, imagine being the first one out here exploring around and that's the thing is I imagine that as like this lone person doing that but like you said it's all a collective effort even even all of that stuff that yeah, leads it, us here if you look at to your accomplishment being we're on top of this this mountain right here saying you know I did this by myself <laughs> no you didn't you got the car who made the car yeah. you got the roads who made the roads yeah even when you try to be alone it's it, it's a collective effort by transitive property <laughs> you know unless you're like a baby born in the middle of the woods. <laughs> Crawling on the ground eating ants until you get strong enough to eat like a, a rodent. Well then, and then you get strong enough to eat a mountain lion. <laughs> but, the, but the ants are doing the work because the ants are giving you energy. <laughs> True, yeah. So There's no escaping it. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's a collaboration. It's humbling thinking of how our hikes to the tops of peaks are more than just our own accomplishments. Even the most self-sufficient survivalist prepper has had to rely on the knowledge of centuries of indigenous people and societies that came before them. No matter how much we might fantasize about being iconoclastic, self-reliant individuals, the reality is that that is largely a fantasy. And there's no better environment to dash those illusions and self-aggrandizing than the harsh desert mountains. Now, we made our way back down the rocky hills. The trail now took us to another overlook of the distant salt flat basin. Here, wow. there were flat, smooth rocks right at the cliff's edge. Whoa! Uh, bit of a drop off. Out of nowhere! There was a sheer drop off here that demanded caution and respect. We took a moment to rest and gaze out into the view. While we rested, we talked about the hike ahead of us. Or how's your shoes holding up, Thomas? Not great. Uh, they were fine going uphill, but now that we're going downhill, really missing that support so that I don't get that toe jam. Yeah. I'm getting that too. Yeah, toe maybe. jam and Earl. <laughs> <laughs> you know that scene at the beginning of uh, Once Upon a Time and uh, in the West. Yeah. Where all the cowboys are just lying around doing nothing. Yep. That's how I feel right now. <laughs> you can see why they do it now. Yeah. It's just like, oh God. Dusty, grimy, and exhausted. So I assume that this big salt flat behind us is the salt basin? I think so. So everything behind us, including what we're on right now, used to be underwater. It was all salt water. So as the water evaporated and moved elsewhere, what was left was the salt. Salt goes down to the lowest point, salt basin. I was saying it earlier, but it's so surreal that we're out here. Like I, 
I'm looking at this huge monolith in front of us and it's like, I still am not grasping that I'm actually here. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't very gradual. This morning we were at a hotel, now we're here. Yeah. And it's really weird to be out here. Especially for you guys, since you guys haven't traveled anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For over a year. It's weird. God, it feels good though, man. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. I know I mentioned earlier that I was a little worried about that storm over there. I wasn't sure if it was heading our way, if it was going north or south. So I took my hiking pole and I lined the bottom of the cork to the horizon and gauged kind of where the top of the clouds were, which is about right here. The top of the clouds are now up to here, which means that the storm front's moving closer to us. So I think we should uh, look to try and get off this mountain sooner rather than later. It's hard to imagine rain actually falling in a land like this, but I guess if it's going to rain on anybody, it would be us. <laughs> Around here, there's some cactuses, which are these more ball-shaped ones. And it's funny because occasionally you find one that's flowering, and it's just the most brilliant burst of color you're totally not expecting to see in the desert. It almost looks fake. But Thomas spotted this, it looks like some sort of a skull down in this gully here. I think I can barely make out like where the teeth go and stuff, but not sure exactly what it is, but man, that is a very archetypical of a desert. <laughs> so we've been hiking for just under six hours. We've done about 6.52 miles. And the sad part is, is that even though it feels like the end, we still have another six miles left. <laughs> At this point in the hike, we were all exhausted, hot, and thirsty. We had come a long way, and we still had a ways to go. So, we were up there, and earlier we were hiking all along that ridge over there. And now, we're gonna meet up somewhere back in there, that's where the junction's at, and then continue back where we were on before. These acacias that we talked about earlier, they look so out of place, especially because they're like colorful, but they also just look weird. It's so bizarre for me, because I never see them actually in bloom when they're green. They're always dead. It almost looks like when someone has like a really gaudy fake garden decoration, that's clearly like a fake flower. Pipe cleaners. That's what they look like. <laughs> wow, why are they all in a row like this? Is it possible somebody Hope to plant them? <laughs> Along with the mysterious looking plants, we also saw strangely geometric slabs of stone in the distance, along with an abandoned metal structure. No idea. I wonder if it's an old water tank. It looks kind of like that. That was my first time. Nothing really in there? Yeah. There is a blue barrel in there. So maybe there was water in here at some point. I don't know. I would like water. <laughs> How did this even get out here? You know? I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> Let's just leave it. <laughs> Look, there's a piece down here too. why but this trail is taking us very far away from... actually I we're supposed to be over there and then go over this way I can see the boat. why here why go this way to go that way why not just we're gonna go, go around this way. little bluff i guess it's a scenic route yeah it's a lot in life to suffer <laughs> wait that's the hitching post no i don't think we're that close is that a there. different one yeah that's definitely a different one don't get your hopes up <laughs> okay <laughs> Next to these hitching posts was a small canyon parallel to the trail. There's a really cool gully here. It looks like it's been dug out almost. Wow, we going down here? Yeah, if only there were water flowing. <laughs> we decided to rest in the shade of a large tree growing from the gully. Ironically, we were also worried about the distant storms that were brewing. We'll long be at camp by the time those clouds get here. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Oh my god, nothing could feel better than what this feels like right now. <laughs> it's like I still have a solid liter and a half maybe. I'm about three quarters of a liter. Wow, just one dumpy looking little tree can be all the difference. It's a beautiful tree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does look dumpy, not in, not in a cute way. Not in an insulting way. <laughs> Get that chocolate. To Murray Fisher again, thank you. Thank you. Thank it. Mm. Need that buzz. The only problem is it just makes me that much more thirsty. I know. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put as many salty things in my mouth first. So salt you can drink. Satisfy all with salt one drink. Salt drink. Salt drink. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> we gotta salt and water the horses. Ugh. Alas, it was eventually time to continue our journey. There was still a good bit to hike, and a significant portion was uphill. Despite the struggle of this hike, the scenery continued to awe and inspire us. Whenever I would see landscapes like this when I was a little bit younger, I always felt like this type of landscape was for somebody else. Like I would never actually visit a place like this, or I would never be able to survive in a place like this, you know? But now that I'm out here, it's a weird kind of dream fulfillment. Not that I've specifically wanted to come to places like this, but just to find out that you actually can. And while you gotta be prepared, it's not that big of a deal. Don't speak too soon, we're not out of this yet. <laughs> Eventually, we made it back to the hitching post we were at earlier on the trail. You know, this is not like our toughest hike in the sense of like, oh, huffing and puffing uphill. But it's tough in a completely different way because like, we're kind of running a little low on water. We still got a ways to go in the sun. I don't know how much of it is the water, but the sun just sucks the energy out of you. Good thing we're not going uphill. We're going up there? Yeah. Oh man, it's over. Oh. It's over. Forget it, guys. Oh. Just. It's good knowing you guys. Show's canceled. <laughs> <laughs> we took a moment to rest in the shade once more before continuing on the last two or three miles of our hike. But at this point, the sun was making us go a little bit mad. There's shade in these yonder hills. <laughs> yes. One more job <laughs> and we'll be home free. What's it looking like? I think we're halfway up the uphill and it's pretty much all downhill from there. Cool. For like a tiny, tiny bit at the end. Well, it's a downhill from here at least. <coughs> I'm not doing so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Water went down the wrong. Wrong hole. <laughs> Heat madness has totally set in. Thomas doesn't remember what species he is anymore. <laughs> we were saying that when we get back, we have a, a big blue container full of water. We're gonna blow up an air mat and just lie under the trunk and open the valve into each other's mouths. <laughs> this view is at least quenching the thirst of the spirit. If not the throat. <laughs> Either throat. <laughs> Thankfully, as we descended this large hill, the hike was suddenly feeling a lot easier. Partly because I'm using Thomas's poles, but also the breeze is nice. <laughs> and the downhill. And the shade. <laughs> Pretty much just everything's better. <laughs> Andrew isn't out of water. Thomas is out of water. But we're getting close. But we weren't in the clear. We were still dehydrated, and our supplies were dwindling. How much more? 1.2 miles. Well, that's better than I thought. This shoe's gonna make it. I don't think so. <laughs> Certainly not past tomorrow. We were almost back to the trailhead, but Thomas kept an eye on the storm just in case. Looks like there's some rain underneath there. You can even see the, the edge of the front. So hopefully we'll have a pretty dry dinner before it starts to rain, if it starts to rain. If it rains, I'm gonna lay on the ground with my mouth open, the big funnel eating it. <laughs> After what felt like an eternity, we were finally back at the first trail junction. Oh, how I've waited to see the sign. I would be 30% happier if I had different shoes. Don't worry, I don't feel much happier with good shoes. <laughs> Pretty happy though. Oh, 
sweet relief. Oh man, that is a nice ground. It feels like I'm on a moving walkway almost. <laughs> Oh, worth it. <laughs> oh. I won't be needing these anymore. You can have them. <laughs> I won't need these anymore either. It never ceases to amaze me though. No matter how far you have left to go, you will inevitably make it or die. <laughs> we haven't died yet. Knock on wood. I feel like I have no empathy for my past self now that I'm here. Yeah. It's like completely erasing all those memories of what that was Just like. Screw that guy. <laughs> Who cares what happened to him? <laughs> That's old, old me. I'm here now. <laughs> now, it was time to get dinner going. But unfortunately, the gas canisters we had bought on the way didn't seem to match the stove. I'll be honest, I'm not convinced that this is the right can. Yeah, there's no... Uh, yeah, it's not the right size can. I hate, the, I, I hate this thing. It's alright, man, we got other food. <laughs> if we can boil up water, then we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah it's not big enough. Yeah. I got this stove because it's supposed to be really good, but because Texas went through that winter storm, everyone's been hoarding the butane packets that go oh, to these things. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. That's unfortunate. And so, we boiled some water as the storm clouds loomed overhead. Can't be cheers, because if we're going to car camp, we might as well relax a little bit. Things are looking up a little bit. Yeah, that rain isn't coming. Dude, we might still be able to cook those steaks. Yeah. You could put the steak just at the bottom of that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd fit perfectly. Psst. All right. Flip it. Psst. Flip it again. <laughs> Wait. So why? What are? What are you? Why are you asking if his billy can has ever cooked food? Because I, I just want to keep my billy can full of water only, like a water only billy can. Because mm. right. yes. Because I've been burned by Andrew. I've been burned by Andrew. Fair. Blame it on me, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Blame it on me. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> to start dinner, we appropriately had some Texas chili, along with some Sichuan chicken and rice. Look how much... Oh, there's so much Whoa. stuff in there, yeah. Dude, this is... I'm gonna... This is plenty of fiber. <laughs> <laughs> you get my drink. You ready? You ready? <laughs> Look at this, I got my hot sauce and chips and everything. Mm. The smells are overwhelming. Mm. This feels like fresh, homemade cooking. This, this tastes like your mom made it. Give me one of those plates. <laughs> Put it in Robbie's food tainted billy can. <laughs> Nothing but the highest COVID safety protocols for us. The only proper way to eat Sichuan rice is with Sichuan chopsticks. Mmm, <laughs> that's actually pretty, pretty good. <laughs> There's a nice like addition of fruit flies for extra protein. I was gonna say, I was like, I think I'm eating fruit flies. <laughs> I, got some, I gotta eat. I just gotta eat. I just gotta eat. I'm gonna grab boy some food, man. I'm gonna grab boy some food. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> After the initial meal, we were holding out hopes that we could cook up Thomas's steaks. All right, so we might have found a solution. We'll see how well this works. Yeah, that smells good. You think they're still good? Yes. <laughs> we got the steaks cooking. At first, fairly certain they were still good even though our insulating bag was pretty warm on the inside. We may have still had a bit of desert madness, but as the evening sky revealed orange clouds in the distance, we just focused on enjoying the evening at hand. Thomas, how are you feeling right now? A little anxious, but less anxious. 
How are you feeling? I'm looking forward to eating Thomas's fillet mignons. <laughs> <laughs> Like, those aren't filet mignons. Yeah. They've long since not been filet mignons. <laughs> you know what? I've actually become an okay chef. Not Obviously, this is not ideal, but if I had the right equipment. Under the dictionary, there'd be, like, skepticism. <laughs> <laughs> and then just be Andrew's face right there. <laughs> I feel like things are looking so much better right now. <laughs> like, we're hydrated. We're still cooking the food that we brought. <laughs> You know, we're gonna put some fillet mignons in this plate and some hard boiled eggs. No, look, so we, we had a three course meal, right? We had the citron rice and the chili. Next will be fillet mignons and eggs, and then we'll finish with the banana pudding. In the distance, we saw hikers still making their way back to camp, and reflected on our own situation right now. We're so temperamental as humans. It's like, we have so much trouble living in the present, and yet so much ease complaining about the present. <laughs> As soon as you get to plan, it's like, well, time to complain about this situation. <laughs> but another thing I was thinking is, you know, on the hike earlier, we were talking about like, you know, just like when you've got your endorphins flowing and you're like having a good time. Car camping gives you that opportunity to have those moments after like a rigorous hike. And so like come back to camp and to just like sit back and relax and stuff. That one's the medium. This is the well done. Now, for presentation, do we have like a nice aioli we can spread on the... <laughs> this looks like the uh, symbol in Zelda. <laughs> I don't know what I was hoping for. This is like, it's not gonna get any better than this. This one is the very well done one. It's, it's got a little red, reasonably but it's well done. <laughs> Likely well done as well. Yeah, that one's well done. Yeah. And then this is the questionably medium one. Can you even cut that? Yeah, that uh... Definitely throw that back Yeah, on. throw that back <laughs> <laughs> right. Perhaps attracted by the sulfur smell of the eggs, a skunk paid our campsite a visit. Oh, he's heading towards our... <laughs> now, it's time to eat this questionable food. <laughs> All things considered, it's not bad. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> Actually, with the bacon juice on there, it's... Mm. If we do have a bathroom emergency tomorrow, I have a bottle of probiotics. <laughs> We're gonna need something stronger than probiotics. We're gonna need antibiotics. <laughs> the egg seems fine. I mean, I'm just a little nervous about this meat. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I think, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at those two bites and hope that my immune system is strong enough to fight off any potential illness. I don't know if it's worth risking it. I mean, you can try this. Is this, this cooking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here. Mm. That's not bad. Yeah. I don't regret this one away. I'm not gonna eat the other one. Are you gonna eat the other one? Mm. When we have a whole nother day mm. or two of hiking, yeah. I don't want to risk it too much. It's just burnt now. <laughs> this is the saddest fillet like mignon ever. This is a perfectly sane food to eat. <laughs> and now for dessert. I'll try to just eat the left side. Not good, man. Oh, that smells good. Man, it's got those crunchy vanilla wafers. <laughs> From here, it looks like mashed potato. <laughs> the moral of tonight's story <laughs> is to make lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> we made lemonade into lemons today, technically. <laughs> Had this beautiful steak and then somehow... <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you ended up ruining it. <laughs> like somebody comes up to you with a tall glass of lemonade and you smack it out of their hand and then just like bite a lemon. <laughs> this is like really making up for the rest of the meal. <laughs> I seriously am just like eating the left side out of it. This will be COVID free by the time you get to it. They should just make these with like a spout that you squeeze it out of. You just cut a corner and then just... <laughs> what you guys got over here? <laughs> Your banana pudding. <laughs> you good? Yeah. Yes. I want this. I guess. <laughs> I'll use the back end of the chopsticks. This is an old, uh, okay. old Chinese trick. Just flip it to the back side. <laughs> Look, it's nice and viscous, so it stays on the chopsticks. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hey. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. It's funny how we're car camping, <laughs> and yet we're doing way worse than we would if we were backpacking. <laughs> you done? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>
Our car camping may not have turned out as luxurious as we had hoped, but we had a restful evening nonetheless. Now, it was time to sleep. But suddenly, in the middle of the night, it started storming. Not just any storm, but one of the heaviest storms with the loudest thunder we've heard while on a trip. dry so far, thankfully. This is intense. I can hear Thomas and Andrew talking, so I assume that they're okay too. I don't hear any frantic scrambling to try to get things dry, so I assume that they're all right. I want to get everything ready in case we need to make a break for the car. Yeah, dude, it's coming down so hard. It almost sounds like hail, and we can see the lightning like through our eyes when we had our eyes closed. It's so bright. <laughs> This is crazy. <laughs> and we're in the desert, too. <laughs> okay, I think the worst of it has passed. I'm gonna go back to sleep. The thunder came back in the early morning, but by the time we woke up, the storm had passed. It was an odd sight, seeing raindrops on our tents in the middle of the desert. After waking up a bit, we refilled our water, boiled some of it up, and talked about the storm. At one point, Thomas was asking if it was hail or rain, and there was like some metal thing that kept hitting too. Oh, I never heard like that. clanking. It was probably this. It was probably this, yeah. Yeah. Thunder was just being echoed by the canyon, but what was crazy to me was the lightning. I don't know if there's any way anyone could have slept through that. <laughs> Today, I feel tired and sore and cloudy-headed, so I'm yeah. sure this... I better drink more water. <laughs> There's certainly a lack of motivation this morning. <laughs> For breakfast, we had mango oatmeal and some instant cold brew coffee with a variety of flavors. Since the coffee was cold brew, Thomas and Andrew decided to try it with cold water. I think to surviving through that night, mm. like everyone else did here. Mm, the flavor's good. Lukewarm I think uh, coffee. maybe we should have gone hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now, to try the oatmeal. That is a... It's okay. It's actually not as good as I thought it was. But I appreciate it. After breakfast, we took in our surroundings and enjoyed the quiet morning for a little bit. Then, we packed our bags and reviewed our plan for the day. So the first part's gonna be the toughest part because we gotta get from where we are all the way to the crest right up there. Then after that, I remember it's pretty steady, but yeah, that first part's gonna be a bear. On the old trails, it looks like a constant diagonal. <laughs> so hopefully Thomas is right. So too. <laughs> we checked the weather for today, which looked a bit iffy. And before heading out, we saw a praying mantis egg sac and some yucca flowers and a thistle that was in bloom. Then we applied some sunscreen and headed out to the trail. Went there yesterday, here today? I think so. I'm ready. So Thomas, can we see the peak from here or is it behind this big one? I see it for a couple hours. It's behind this one for sure. That uphill's tough already. Yep. <laughs> As expected. After yesterday's long, dehydrated hike, our bodies were protesting against the idea of summiting Texas's tallest mountain. But we continued on nonetheless.
With all of us being a bit worn out, we had to figure out the best way to hike all of this uphill without exhausting ourselves. We were talking about whether it's better to go at a slow but consistent pace without taking breaks or, you know, go until you need to take a break. One thing works better for you, one thing works better for me, because every time I rest at a point like this with the breeze, I feel like I'm ready to go. I just like go so fast. I think I'm with Andrew. I like the intervals better than the study. Yeah. We hiked higher and saw a sign cautioning horse riders to dismount. I wish I had a horse. <laughs> be cool. Just ride on Thomas's yeah. back. <laughs> As we hiked higher, we noticed that already the scenery seemed different from yesterday's trail. So one of the reasons I really like this hike is because you get a variety of vegetation. Already we're getting some bigger bushes. And just everything's a little bit more grouped together while yesterday was pretty sparse. So I think I saw a plant that I often see out in the west called Indian paintbrush. Uh, the red petals are actually edible, but I, there's only one, so it's like, it would do you a little good out here. <laughs> Once we crested one hill, it revealed to us more hills that we had to crest in the distance. Actually, up there is where the backcountry campsite is. Oh. Well, oh. It's closed because of the dog fire, but that's where you would spend the night. Now, we were seeing more and more incredible mountain scenery all around us, and the environment was beginning to change yet again. So as we're gaining altitude, we suddenly entered this more piney part of the forest. Among the pines, there's also junipers, another type of evergreen, and some of the sections of the trail are just littered with these bright blue juniper berries. I still don't know the exact species that's used for this, but juniper is a, a basis for gin, the, the alcohol. But uh, I would like to stay sober while hiking this mountain, so. I will not partake. <laughs> In the shade of the pines, we saw evidence that confirmed our suspicions about the storm we had slept through. So, last night it definitely hailed a little bit because we got actual hail pieces here. Yeah, at least up here. I'm suddenly craving dipping dots. <laughs> Ice cream of the past. Veering off the trail was a small path leading to the ridge of this hill that we decided to check out. Let's go take a look. Might be a viewpoint or something. Woo! Oh yeah, wow. Not bad. Not bad at all. It is really great when you get to a point where you don't see anything higher than you. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you've got a nice cold breeze to wick away all the sweat. From this vantage point, we could see the entirety of yesterday's hike. We started down there, you see that little, those two gulches? Yeah, yeah. We went, we went over one of those, then we went up that hill, but on this side, and then that was the crest, and then we got on the other side. So that's the valley over there that we were in yesterday. We stopped for a small snack break before continuing on our hike. <sighs> One thing that's been fairly consistent for all of the mountains that we've climbed is that you don't see the top for a long time. You see lots of false peaks and you're like, oh, not bad, not bad. And you're like, nope, bad. Like how many times did I ask you on Whitney if that was the top? I blocked it out, I feel like the sixth. <laughs> it's good progress though. We were down there earlier. It's weird how deceptively far and close the hills seem. Like, we already came so far, but this hill is probably not actually as close as it looks. <laughs> Thomas, you think that's it? I think so. If that's not it, it's gotta be close to that. We continued hiking and eventually came to the backpacking campsite. So this was the campsite near the peak where we might have stayed. Well, near might be too strong of a word. Let's get up to that ridge and take a breather. Yeah, that sounds great. Well, at least we know that's the peak for sure now. Yeah. Pretty sure that's the peak. It's hard to believe we've already done three-fourths of it because that mountain looks like doing everything we've just done again <laughs> to me. <laughs> we've done three and a half miles, two hours, ten minutes. Three and a half? Wow. It's amazing that we can 
hike like normal people. <laughs> when they want there to. is a rainbow encircling the sun up there. Oh. Feels good. I'm not a fan of hiking uphill, but I'm a fan of having hiked uphill. <laughs> mm -hmm. Weather is much more manageable today than it was yesterday. Really comfortable today. If the storm goes like this, it'll be great. If it does, packing everything away and just disassociating. <laughs> Now, it was time to hike the last portion up to Guadalupe Peak, and the top was clearly in view. I guess one disadvantage of being able to see the top is it does kind of put me in the mindset of thinking that I'm almost done, even though I'm nowhere close. So every time I see these calcite rocks on mountains like this, I think of uh, this time me and Thomas were in our backyard, and we would always, as a kids, like dig around for fossils and stuff. And one day we found this brick-sized rock just covered on the top with this beautiful like white calcite crystal and we were like so excited thought we were gonna be rich <laughs> to this day it's still kind of a cool find though as it turns out these crystalline rocks were gypsum we kept hiking up now exposed on the rocky shrubby mountain face to the clouds and open sky we were so high now that we could see the top of El Capitan below us, which had towered over us on yesterday's hike. We can definitely see the top. I see people like just resting at the top. Wow, that looks so far away though. <laughs> Windy, woo! Let's go, I don't want to stand here anymore, I gotta move. Now, it was up several rocky switchbacks to the top. After a small precarious part on the trail, we finally began approaching the summit. Oh man. Oh, there it is, the secret pyramid. <laughs> Tired bodies were filled with relief at having reached the top. Now we explored the peak and took in all the sights there were to see. Actually, this is AA for Adventure Archives. Oh, yeah, we were already here. Oh. It really is the highest point in Texas. Those look yeah, on par, but I guess we're still probably higher. This is a pretty amazing view, I'm not gonna lie. Like, We've talked in the past about how sometimes you get to the top of a mountain and you're like, whatever, but this is quite a great view. My body, I think, physically doesn't know what to feel because it's cold, but it's also like got the full sun bearing down on it. <laughs> this will be one of those trips that you enjoy more afterwards. Man, what a way we've come. After 4.2 miles and 3,000 feet of elevation gain, we had made it to Guadalupe Peak. At 8,751 feet, it is the highest point in Texas. We now made our way back down the mountain. We were eager to get back to camp as today's weather was still somewhat uncertain. Along the way, we bumped into Michelle and Becky, one of our viewers and her friend. Hey, I know who we want to say hi to. We want to say hi to Azure in Mexico and Stacy in Africa and Steve in Alaska. And we'll see you guys at Grand Teton in a month. Yep. Awesome. Nice. Who's your brother? 
Oh, he could make it this time, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although awesome. he's probably happy that he didn't have to climb this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad it wasn't just a climb for me. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, that's so I cool. Was yeah. she hikes After that nice chance encounter, it was time to get down the mountain. Okay, that storm cloud is looking super grim. Okay, well, it looks like the clouds are moving this direction. Our campsite's back this way, right? So we should probably be okay. I love going downhill, but man, my heart breaks a little bit every time I see someone coming up. <laughs> I feel so bad for them. <laughs> I mean, that was us, but that was past me. I have no sympathy for him. <laughs> it was our past selves foolish decision to go up. They, <laughs> they reaped what they sowed. <laughs> Uh, it's 3.13 p.m. and we're not seeing anybody coming up anymore, which is probably for the best because they'd probably be going down after dark. But also, I don't see anybody going down right now either. I know there's a bunch of people behind us. As we made our way down the mountain, we could see the rest of the trail off in the distance, leading back to the campsite. There are these phrases like, the end is in sight, but in this case, it's very literal. We can see the end and we can see a clear path to getting there too. It's just still a little bit more work. Yeah, <laughs> not easy. As we made our way down the switchbacks, we saw a little millipede crawling around at a much more relaxed pace. Far off in the valleys, a bird soared through the sky, experiencing an ease that we were starting to yearn for. Despite our tired feet, we kept on, getting closer to the trailhead. In any other scenario, Thomas would already be down and have dinner cooked for us. <laughs> The only way we're able to keep up with him right now is because he's wearing loafers made from gophers. <laughs> Boy, it is a weird feeling to like hike close to your limit twice in a day. I know, or twice it's in a row. Weird. Human body is so fragile, but also so persistent. <laughs> God, yeah. It's weird how inevitable it is to me. Yeah. If you keep walking, you'll eventually get there. Yeah. And every time we do. <laughs> Finally, we made it back to camp and gave our weary legs much needed relief. How are your guys' energy levels? What's energy? <laughs> this isn't the hardest hike we've done. It's just a result of the circumstances from yesterday seeping into today. This is beautiful though. You know, I know you guys were a little skeptical about car camping and everything. It's like, oh, it's not gonna be the same as backpacking. We've hiked more yeah. from car camping yeah, yeah, yeah. and we've got one of the best campsites probably in Texas. This is an A-tier campsite. If this table didn't wobble, this would be a nice <laughs> campsite. Visitor Sitter doesn't close for another 50 minutes. Oh yeah, let's go check I don't know if they out. have drinks. Yeah, they do. Yo, let's go, let's go. Yeah. If we weren't able to have our filet mignons, we were gonna enjoy the luxury of car camping another way. We got to the Nature Center, where we enjoyed the displays they had before purchasing some refreshments. Well, we did this first, right? Yeah, that, and that's El Capitan right here. That's El Cap, and then this is Guadalupe Peak. coldest thing we've had in many days. Oh, oh man, that is good. Wow, that's oh, on point. Man. It's like I'm giving the inside of my body a shower. Ugh. We always are like out west in the Rockies and the Sierras, and they always have huckleberry things. But it seems in the southwest, prickly pear is the flavor of choice. And prickly pear is all around us. Which one? Take one. Mmm, <clears throat> the strong flavor. Pretty good. Can I try it? Mmm, wow. I don't know if that tastes like prickly pear or not. I mean, prickly pear fruit is actually pretty sweet, mm. actually. Flavor's one thing, but the texture in this one is really good. Yeah, yeah. I was just not expecting it. This tastes like old sock drawer. <laughs> I'm getting some sugar overload right now. This experience right now is the exact opposite of yesterday's hike out. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you can't get experiences like this until you've done our previous experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You can't just skip right to this, it's not as fun. This would be the most unfulfilling experience if you hadn't done that. <laughs> yeah. It'd be pretty gross, actually. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. No. Nah. For today's luxurious dinner, we had some instant mashed potatoes and some Texas chili. It's like a nice little uh, cafeteria meal, you know? That chili is really good. Mm -hmm. You that. guys wouldn't know this, but there's a big argument that real Texas chili doesn't have beans in it. Hmm, I've heard some stuff about that, yeah. And so this does not have beans in it. Eating like chili and potato slop at a campsite while holding the fork incorrectly. <laughs> That's what I think of when I think of camping out in the desert. You and I are like dressed for two oh. totally different different things here. Thomas is ready for a luau. Yeah, I'm getting... Uh, chili all over my shirt. Yeah, I'm getting chili all over my hands. <laughs> uncivilized table manners for an uncivilized meal. <laughs> next, we boiled some water in the same billy can for the next dish. Is this acceptable level of debris for dessert? I, I don't even want to see it. Like, if I see it, I know I won't eat it. So just don't show it to me. We'll show the audience. <laughs> <laughs> While our dessert cooked, we relaxed some more. Now, our fruit crumble dessert was ready to eat. I think Marie Fisher? <laughs> yep. This is Marie Fisher, thank you. These crumblies look really good. Mm. Oh wow, that was good. Mm. Yeah, this is the best thing I've eaten. I like these whole grain crunchies and plump fruits. It's really like an adventure in a bowl. <laughs> that was really good. Back to doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and after dessert, the only thing on our docket, even more relaxation. It's always great being able to have plenty of time to waste. entered this phase of the day. There's a plane very slowly moving its way across the sky. Guaranteed they're eating lobster. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't trade positions with them for anything in the world. Yeah, yeah, same. This is like as sublime as it gets and they're up there cooped up with masks. <laughs> Not eating lobster. <laughs> oh yeah. Let me just uh, wrap my arms up with these. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Go feed me a Twizzler. <laughs> we all get to take turns being Caligula. <laughs> As the sun set and dusk fell upon us, we went for a short walk to refill our water. Twilight especially is like some of the most peaceful moments in life. My other favorite part is when you're at a place that was crowded and now it's not crowded. Like oh, yeah. the whole RV lot is mostly empty. God, I love being the last person out, you know? Dude, just the sounds of crickets, empty, big open sky. It's like almost still not sunk in that I'm here in a weird way. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like hard for your body to perceive that, <laughs> especially after a year of not really going out west or anything, or doing anything.
yesterday I stayed in Thomas's tent, <laughs> and now I'm staying in Robbie's, so that we equally distribute the uh, suffering. <laughs> but it's also for my own personal sake to figure out which one is a better tent mate <laughs> for future, future use. <laughs> the suffering has already begun. <laughs> The next morning, we woke up early, and had plenty of time before the next leg of our journey. For this final day, we were planning on doing a short hike on the Devil's Hall Trail. Unfortunately, after two long days of hiking in less than adequate shoes, Thomas's feet were in too much pain to continue, and decided to stay behind. Take these, it's dangerous to go alone. You gonna be alright? Yep. Alright, we'll see you soon. once again found ourselves at the same trailhead. Uh, we've taken all three forks in this road. <laughs> yeah. The cool morning air and the mist almost makes you forget that you're in the desert. With the way the low-lying clouds and mountains looked in the morning light, it felt like we were witnessing the dawn of time itself. came to an overlook of the canyon below, and, appropriately, heard the calls of a canyon wren. We continued deeper into the valley, and the canyon below us seemed to get wider. Do you think that was carved out by the water? It looks like it to me, honestly. I feel like maybe the soil here is like really uh, vulnerable to erosion because it's not like there's a ton of vegetation holding everything together. Mm. I mean, when it storms, it seems to really storm here, so. Yeah. It's interesting, we're walking and I'm seeing these burnt logs everywhere. There's one here, and there's even like a burnt tree in the distance. And I know they're dealing with some wildfires north of here right now, so I wonder if this is from a past fire or something. It must be. We also saw this incredible tarantula resting in the shade. Yeah, that's the first time I've ever seen a tarantula though. That's not the type of spider you'll see at home. That's the type that'll... I was gonna say put hair on your back, but it's more like it's got hair on its back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These are one of the agave stalks. The trail now led us towards the gully, and the terrain became much rockier and harder to distinguish. A lot of times it's frowned upon to make cairns, but in an area like this where the trail's really rocky and hard to make out, this is actually a perfect place for cairns. <laughs> Just a few, you know, to mark your way. We passed through sections of sandstone boulders and also saw some conglomerate rocks. It's crazy, all these rocks have just been like glued together. It almost looks like natural made concrete. Look at these ones on the bottom. Are they just like big rocks oh, yeah. hanging off? <laughs> As we continued, the environment changed even more. We're suddenly in a section of the trail that has all these maple trees, and there's all these fallen maple leaves, and it almost smells like the Midwest. So maple trees can survive in this environment too? It doesn't require? Apparently, I'm wondering if it's here specifically because this is like where most of the water runs through. This is not the type of area I think of when I think of maple trees. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised too. The leaves are much smaller though. I wonder if that's a different species. As we hiked deeper, we saw some of the layered limestone rocks that make this trail unique. It's really interesting how these rocks are actually kind of wavy. Like, I wonder if that's because it used to be an ancient ocean and it fossilized into that like sort of pattern. Looks like it was done by a landscaper. Yeah, yeah. 
Wish I knew a geologist. <laughs> Whoa. What? Whoa. We go up there? I think so. That is cool. Dude, this landscape, it really does feel like a landscaper made this. Like this is just out of nowhere. Wow, dude. Dude, this pool of water, you could tell me it's any amount of deep. I would believe it. I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. This is like out of my dreams. Yeah, yeah. Man, I wish I could go to a place like this. So cool. Look at that spire up here, too. I have no idea what I'm gonna find beyond the next bend in this canyon. There could be like an ancient city for all I know. Yeah. What was actually around the next corner was the namesake of the trail, Devil's Hall. Whoa. Oh. Wow. Well, that is amazing, dude. Is this like trees, how each year is a layer of rock or something? Yeah, different layers of sediment building up on each other as like time goes on. And if this was actually an old ocean, it makes sense. It's like you would have the ocean floor and then like more and more sediment gathering mm. on top. Maybe some of this was exposed through like tectonic activity. And maybe that's why there's also like the split here. But I'm an amateur botanist, not a geologist. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just take a little peek out here and then... <sighs> some people back there were telling us that during the summer, they don't want you going any farther to keep plants alive. But I, I'd say that was a good hike. Awesome. Very nice hike. Like the many forces at play that created these towering limestone bluffs, and the interactions between different plants and animals that keep this ecosystem healthy, each of us is connected to a broader group of people. No matter how unique or self-reliant an individual we may be, we can only exist thanks to the people and environment all around us. Without all of the people who support us, who build the tools we use and gather the food we eat, without the trees and the soil and the air that we rely on, we could not be. Without a collective, there is no individual. When we seek solitude of the wilderness to answer life's questions, it responds with a bit of irony. In the wild, we see entire ecosystems that couldn't exist without constant interactions between species. Trees and fungi communicate and exchange nutrients with each other. Insects and animals pollinate flowers. Even the debris and decay feed back into new life. And humans are part of these interactions too. It's easy to fall into the trap of puffing our chests out and boasting about our accomplishments. But every once in a while, it's worth it to step outside, journey into nature, and let the wilderness give you a humble reminder that we are all parts of a greater whole. Do you have uh, any shout outs you want to give to anybody? Say hi to anybody? So, all of our kids, Hunter, Gage, Roxy, Gunny, and uh, yeah, they watch your stuff with us too, so. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Bonjour. Hola. Our chariot is waiting. Excellent. Let's do this. <laughs> Though we reached the end of our time in Guadalupe Mountains, there is still one last section of our trip. To close out our trip, we would be crossing the border to New Mexico and exploring the deep underground chasms of Carlsbad Caverns. But 
first, it was time for our post-hike pre-spelunking meal. I didn't know the burrito. Nachos, burrito, Frito pie. I never knew what Frito pie was. I always heard about it in King of the Hill. <laughs> Tastes like a Super Bowl party. <laughs> I mean, these are some standard looking nachos, but you can't go wrong with nachos. <laughs> so is that the green chili or red chili on top? It's green chili. Wow, that's really good. It's fresh, it's hot. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel a little regret not getting that burrito, but this is still hitting the spot. Frito pie, I, that is definitely the worst of the three. I feel bad for it. Yep. You should get something else. <laughs> get a sundae or a cookie. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a sundae and I'm going to get a hot dog. Your yours is bigger than mine. Look at that. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Wow. Dude, your Sunday's on the way. Ooh. Only the finest of dining men. <laughs> wow, dude. Definitely the flower choice. And who wants that cherry? You want that cherry? You don't want cherries? Nope. Get out of here. some cream, too. <laughs> I am a proponent of eating your dessert while you're eating your dinner. I don't like waiting. It's variety. Yeah, I like no. the bouncing back and forth. That's Getting blast. a little salty and sweet. Don't point the camera at him. <laughs> Stay away. That's blasphemous. I don't think I've had a better hot dog. Maybe it's just because I've been camping and everything, but mm. it's how thick that is. How thick that dog is. That's a good dog. With with that green chili. Dude, that chili is actually pretty spicy, even by my standards. Yeah. Mm. Pull it right down with your Sunday, baby. <laughs> What a shameful display. <laughs> How's it? It's good. It's real good. Now, Thomas gave a preview of our upcoming cave hike. Yeah, you gotta walk outside first, then you're gonna walk down, and then it's a slow descent down there, and then it pretty much levels out until you get to the big room, which is like maybe about a mile or so of hiking underground. You can see the trails here, but we're gonna hike the big room all the way back to the elevators and it's gonna take us here again. At the Nature Center, we saw a variety of indigenous artifacts. Then, we headed outside and hiked towards the entrance of the cave. As we approached the cave, we could smell the stench of guano, and we heard the chirps of cave swallows as they flew around the entrance of the caverns. As we made our way deeper into the gaping maw of the cavern, we felt a sense of awe and uncertainty coming over us. Wow, that is ominous. To me, one of the coolest things about this national park is that you can actually hike. It's not like you're part of a tour. You can do tours, but you have the freedom and flexibility to go as fast as you want or as slow as you want in the caves. It's already nice and cool. It's not quite cold yet, but pretty close. Already, we began seeing stalactites dangling from the roof of the caverns. The back of this passage is where all the bats live. The path took us in the direction of the entrance, but deeper underground. A single beam of light shone from the entrance of the cave on the rocks and rubble below. Now, as we made our way deeper in, we got one last glimpse of sunlight before hiking into darkness. All around us were a variety of limestone formations, shaped by trickling water and erosion. As we descended deeper into the cave, Thomas explained what we would find at the bottom. We're gonna get to a place called the Big Room, and I think it's the size of at least two football fields. This isn't the big room? <laughs> no. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine coming in here for the first time, completely uncharted, no lights set up? Like, look how cavernous and intimidating this already is. <laughs> As we hiked deeper, we saw more and more extravagant patterns that almost look organic, like the gills of a mushroom or some sort of strange alien architecture. We also saw bumpy popcorn formations and bits of crystalline gypsum. We 
We continued through the massive caverns, hiking further and further underground. Every time I think it can't go any lower, it goes a little lower. <laughs> Finally, we reached the bottom and neared the entrance of the big room. Bumpy, popcorn-textured stalagmites and stalactites protruded from the cavern walls in some areas. In others, smooth, wavy lumps of limestone flanked the path. Still more impressive were the twin domes, which looked like giant, melted candles rising far above our heads. We also saw a rope dangling from high above the ceiling, and a rickety old ladder descending into a pit, the old climbing tools of past explorers in this cave. The further we went, the more Lovecraftian formations we saw all over the cavern walls. And the massiveness of this cave continued to impress us. I don't think there's any chance of the scale coming across on video. It is so much bigger than anything you could imagine. As we explored the big room, we saw more and more massive stalagmites, including this one, the Rock of Ages. The entire cave was full of incredible and mysterious wonders, including small helictites, protrusions that grow in a direction other than up and down. One thing's for certain, if I were spelunking, I would get lost immediately. <laughs> the people who first explored this, they didn't have lights like this. Yeah. Like, we have the whole thing lit up. Towards the end of the hike, we explored the visitor center that was built into this cave decades ago and took a bathroom break. It is absolutely absurd <laughs> that I was able to just use the bathroom, wash my hands on like a marble countertop, <laughs> flush. <laughs> and we're like 300 feet down right now, man. That's crazy. Now it was time to take the elevator back up. We're so used to seeing like caves in this dark amber lighting, but if it were exposed to the sun, it might just look bright white like this. Huh. The elevator descended 750 feet to pick us up before rapidly ascending back to the surface. Well, we got a whole elevator to ourselves. It's like 25 feet per second almost. What's crazy is this is still faster than my elevator in my apartment. <laughs> oh. Isn't it crazy you're just underground and two minutes later? We're literally standing above where we were earlier and I can't see anything now. <laughs> well, I would say that was 2000% worth it. Man, that was awesome. That, I feel very disoriented right yeah. now. Yeah, this view is like somehow so much more breathtaking now that we haven't been out in the open for so long. That's like another world, man. We entered like all the way over there and emerged in this visitor center over here. Yo, I am so disoriented right now. I feel like a mountain man who's just emerged from a mountain after five years of solitude. <laughs> this is literally the opposite of what we were just doing. We were in a dark contained cave and now you can literally see for miles and miles, like hundreds of miles. Do you ever hear the like thought experiment? It's like Plato's cave. Oh yeah, yeah. This is like Plato's cave. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now our Texas journey had come to an end. It had been an amazing time sharing this landscape with the others. But for now, it was time to head out, drive home, and rest easy. But we'll be back soon for yet another adventure.
Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. These videos are only possible thanks to viewers like you and our supporters at patreon.com slash adventure. If you'd like to support our channel, check out the link in the description below. Also in the description, you can find a link to our Teespring store where we've got t-shirts for sale with designs like this one, this one, and then we've also got an awesome classic design. If you want another way to support the channel, check out that link. Thank you again so much for watching, and we'll see you on our next adventure. Esteemed members of the AA Discord, thank you very much for joining me today. On my right, Dan Vulcans. Next to him, Aaron Jones. On my left, Bruce Phillips. Next to him, Jason Bourgeois. I am, of course, Sanwar One, and I brought you here today because, as I understand it, some of you have something to say? Yes. I would like to wish Carrie a happy birthday, and I hope that your day is as special as you are. Are you talking to me? Huh? What? Well, anyway, I'd like to give a shout out to my girlfriend, Emily. I love you. I know you're not talking to me, but you're looking right at me. Huh? Well, anyway, I'd like to wish my wife, Elise, a happy anniversary. Fantastic. This calls for a celebration. Douglas Jackson, please bring the drinks. Oh, uh, none for me. Thanks. Okay, well, I'll just take yours then. Okay. Here's to Lin Chen. Ah. All right, so as my turn starts, I'll go ahead and draw a card. Hmm. All right, Gavin Ryan. I'll first start out by playing a Richard Frangiamore card which then lets me roll a dice to see how many patrons I can put from my hand into play. And it looks like I rolled a three, so I'm gonna go ahead and put an Aquia Giasara here, a Mary Cabbage, and a Jay Ramundo into play. Now, since I have four patrons in play now, I can go ahead and tap them all to actually pull a different card from a completely different game and play a Salvador Gonzalez. When Salvador Gonzalez comes into play, even though the rules don't fit with this certain game, it lets me put two more cards from my hand into play, which I will then do. Now, I can use these two cards to attack you and instantly kill you. You know this is why people don't play with you, right, Brian? Thanks for sticking with us towards the end here. I want to give a special shout out to some of our patrons as well, taking this one a little bit more seriously because over the last year we have flourished because of your continued support. So because of that, I would like to give a special shout out to Charlie Joe, Expedition Research LLC, Ann McBride, John Lisa Truitt, Jasper Caparota, Sun Jan Wong, and an old coworker of mine, Christina Alvarez who wants to give a shout out to the whole Alvarez clan. We realize that the pandemic has touched everyone in different ways. We've kind of come out of this uh, very fortunate, very lucky, and because of your continued support, we will continue to make the content that you enjoy. So want to give a special shout out to uh, everyone uh, as well this time, thanking you for your support and letting you know that the best is still yet to come. Thank you so much. Are you tired of tripping on the stairs? Do you want to learn how to have better balance? Are you sick of running into things? Well then you need to learn John Scott Wing Chun. We'll teach you the basics of how to punch and kick. We'll show you how to balance on one leg for hours. And we'll teach you the secret techniques, like the secret nunchuck form, taught to my sensei, William Garnett, by his sensei, Jen Mobile, taught to him originally by Grandmaster Arlo T.J. Augustine. I'm Evil McPhee, 
And when Sensei John Scott took me in, he told me that he would teach me the secrets of using my voice to fight by using Fusro Da. I'm really excited. That's right, I'll teach you how to harness your chi to knock your enemies out without even touching them. My name's Jeremy. I signed up with my good friend Elaine Anthony and her two boys, the Anthony boys, who love to go hiking, by the way. Ever since I signed up, Sensei John Scott has taught me how to kick butt and how to never trip when I walk again. So what are you waiting for? Call the number on your screen. And if you sign up right now, you'll get a free plain white t-shirt. I don't know what if you brought the whole thing, but I got salt. Just there wasn't salt. much left anyway. Oh, you got salt? I guess not much anyway. Mm. Did you just take two bites? Yeah, you can take no, two. No, this is a single, 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 single. If you, if you double, you gotta let me know ahead of time. <laughs> I, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> You're in double now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want double so bad, just double, man. <laughs> it smells. It smells really good. It smells like a Senegalese place that we go to. Yeah, not as good obviously, but it's pretty dang good for a little camping meal. Do you double now or are you single? I singled. You <laughs> singled, I, I watched. <laughs> Thomas is the bite lord. <laughs> 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 <laughs>